All right, draft time here on Light Camera Bar. So make sure if you're on YouTube, hit the uh, like button. Helps us out big time. And subscribe to the YouTube channel as we try and grow it. Do more videos, more fun things. Uh, it is kind of a draft, but more of like a... I don't know. It's like, it's like a weird exercise. Time. Yeah, it's, it's, an it's, exercise. It's, it's, it's an exercise in thought. Uh, Jeff D. Lowe, Ken Jack, Gooch, and our guest for today, PFT Commenter. PFT, how are you? Hey, guys. I'm doing great. Thank you guys for the invite. I feel like it's been it's been a while since I've been on LCB. Yeah, mm, it's, it's been a hot it, minute. It's been quite a while. You are a big football guy. Football season right around the corner. So we actually did this the other day on the show. I forget. Kendrick or Gooch, who, who asked the question about Kirk Cousins? That was me. Just you, I think, yeah. It's a great question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to compliment oh, you, but you, this, you yourself. Dump it. Dump it. <laughs> it was, uh, who is, what director is most like Kirk Cousins? Uh, and so we decided today to do actors, actresses, and their NFL quarterback comparisons. Wait, now uh, I want to know. What did you guys say? I, I said Zack Snyder. I said Michael Bay. Mm. Okay. Uh, how do you say his name? Is it Jim C- Cavizel? Cavizel? Jim oh, Cavizel. Yeah. 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 That's Kirk. Yeah. No, that's actually strangely accurate. Why, why do you say that? I just think that they look a lot alike. I think yeah, it's yeah. just purely based on, on uh, visual. So we'll let, we'll let PFT go first. Actors, wow. actresses. I ended up going only actors. Um, there was a couple actors that, that could have worked, but I tried to go a little different on a few of mine. Um, and we're just, you know, we're obviously very sexist. Um, so here we go. Clearly. So. PFT, we'll let you go first, then Kendrick, mm-hmm. then myself, then Gooch. But again, it's not like a draft. If somebody, if all of us pick, you know, Kirk Cousins or do something, I don't think that matters because I would assume our comps are different. So PFT, first up. Okay, my first pick is a no-brainer. Um, I'm going to look at the uh, your favorite team, Jeff. I'm going to look at the Cleveland Browns. It's an easy one. And I'm going to Sean Watson as Bill Cosby. <laughs> what's, what's the comp there? I think that I think that there's a lot of similarities on the field, off the field. Um, you can let your mind take that wherever you want to take it. Bill Cosby, innocent, right? Got let out of yes. jail, so he's never Back. convicted. Same thing with Deshaun Watson. He just sat he's, out a year. Bill Cosby just sat out a year. It's, That's true. it's alarming how many people in Hollywood you could you could. By the way, I was like, I was like, if I go to Deshaun, or I'm sure someone else will. I'm like. Man, a lot of folks I can make that comp to on this one for for not football reasons. Yeah, yeah. I feel the like Bill Cosby is the strongest though. I, they they just line up so well. The comp for it to come like full circle, it needs to be like Warner Brothers, like or like a very poorly run Hollywood studio needs to give Bill Cosby like an absolute bag to come play like a superhero <laughs> or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would rock. Also, Cosby still being alive is shocks me every time I realize he's a that. million years old. I thought he died in jail. He's only eighty six. That's also kind of crazy. Because I feel like he's been old forever. That's pretty old, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, but, but like, there's some other old actors in Hollywood who, like, he looked 86 too. Like, I mean, I guess you know, there's just some others who are also. I just feel like he'd be in the 90s now. Hey, uh, hey all right. Jeff. Hey, Jeff. So did Deshaun last season. Yeah. Deshaun. Yeah. <laughs> right. He looked. He looked <laughs> like makes, a, makes. All right. Relax. Makes like one, a 68 makes one overall. Super Bowl over there. <laughs> Hope you can sleep at night, Jeff. <laughs> My the they the yes yeah, still a Browns fan. <laughs> just just with a scumbag quarterback. Um uh Ken Jack up next. Uh okay, I'm going to go with Kenny Pickett and my comp is all current actors uh <laughs> that are what? part of the uh SAG after cuz they're all on the picket lines. Uh just okay. like an obvious comp. Uh both also have a history of hating the Browns. Um both <laughs> have played for a team that protects perverts. So that I think that there's a lot of comps all across the line. I know I'm cheating by taking all current actors, but I feel like that's a very obvious one to take. Yeah, that that that's a very you pick. It makes sense though. It also it lines up in many ways. Yeah. He, do, he um, does kind of look like an amalgamation of every actor from the CW. If you were to just like squish their face into like an AI yes. thing and have it spit out, this is a perfectly average actor. He's like if someone drew like Bradley Cooper from memory, basically. You yeah, know what I mean? and was a bad artist. There. Also, I thought you were going to make a hands joke. I feel like all actors in Hollywood have small and tiny hands. They're just tiny people. Yeah, this is, it is true. The biggest person in Hollywood is like Joaquin Phoenix. He's like five foot eight. Yeah, exactly. The guy from that Burger King commercial with the huge Whopper. That's oh, that's, that's right. That's, that's what uh, legendary. Yeah, it looks like him. Back when this this is more NBA related. Back when the Cavaliers had JJ Hickson, uh, he could just never I catch favorite. a pass. He could never catch a pass, especially in the paint. And people on the Cavs message board I used to post on, they would just post the tiny hands Burger King guy and say it's JJ Hicks. And that is, that's as tough of a burn if you, if you can get your yeah. tiny hands guy. 
They um, actually don't look that dissimilar, which is kind of, I'm showing Gooch right now. They don't look that dissimilar. Yeah, the Burking Tiny Hands guy has has kind of long hair. The Burking Tiny Hands guy looks like the guy who plays Nelson Baghetti and so does a lot. Yeah. yeah, baghead. Yeah, yeah. Bag, that's that's one of my baghead. Gavin Belson calling him baghead will never not make it. It's a baghead. Um, I, I don't know if you guys caught this or Jeff, if you caught this, but there's a perfectly synced up moment there with Ken Jack. If you're watching on the YouTube where he goes, I'm going to show Gooch for a second. And as he, and, <laughs> and, and his, his legs were spread and apart spread. and he's wearing tiny shorts. And I saw, I think they I saw his balls. Up. They hike up a little bit. It was a great moment in podcasting. You can't, you can't script that. Oh my Jeez. God. Um, my pick first one, uh, I'm going to have Russell Wilson. I'm going to go Russell Wilson. He was really good for a while. He was kind of a mega star. Not to say flash in a pan, but he was like the guy. And now maybe he will be, maybe he is. And he's still relevant because you know him by name, but he had a horrible year last year. I think some people think the Broncos could be better this year, but like, I could see them just stinking. I want Russell Wilson, Dane Cook. Uh, just kind of mm. feels like the time passed him by was was king of the world. He had his the super finger. He had his vicious circle tour. He won his Super Bowl. And now kind of like, you know, who Dane Cook is, you know, who Russell Wilson is. That's the shocker. PFT, you the super finger, the literal is, shocker. Yeah, that's that's it's this, right? Oh, that's is that finger, one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I thought yeah, that was this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot what the no, that's the shocker. PFT, you threw up the actual shoes. shocker. No, I threw, um, I threw up. I threw up one in the pink, two in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, love that. The oh, exact king of the roast turn. So, yeah, Russell Wilson, good. Dane Cook for me. That's that's my comp. Uh, oh my gosh, Gooch. Uh, I'm going to stick with my own team. I'm going to go Joe Burrow. I'm going to give him a comp. He's a hot young star. He's only he's only been to one Super Bowl so far. His comp is going to be Timmy Chalamet, who's also been nominated for one as- Oscar. So Hasn't cool. won one yet. He's going to win one in the future. My boy Burrow is going to win one too. Um, yeah, I mean this is an easy comp. I mean, they're both just the best looking guys in Hollywood. Everyone loves them. Uh, no sexually enemies. ambiguous. Yeah, sexually ambiguous. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's an easy comp. You agreed so quickly. <laughs> Wait, what I do wish. you think? I wish. Kinjack, I'm just curious from your perspective, what is sexually ambiguous about Joe Burrow? I don't know. He could. You could flip him either way. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, like, on, on you couldn't see Joe his- Burrow <laughs> hooking up with, with Timothy Chalamet. I could see it. Man, that'd be the fuck the Musk Zuckerberg fight. <laughs> Give me that. Yeah, the live stream PPV <laughs> of Joe Burrow and Timothy Chalamet pounding each other. Yeah, I think there's only going to be pounding one way. Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> They're not switching. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll we'll dip it back to PFT. This is not like a draft. We won't yeah. do snake PFT. You're up next. Okay, I'm gonna go with uh, Vin Diesel as Jimmy Garoppolo. Oh, on the Raiders. Uh, they're both Italians, right? Yes. They both leave. I think. His real name is Mark Sinclair. So I'm not <laughs> yeah, sure. Vin yeah. Diesel is Italian. Vin <laughs> Diesel's is everywhere. Is. He's uh, Italian coded. Yeah. In, the, uh, in, in canon. The, the Diesel name comes from Sicily. It's very. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to sit here and not tell me that Vin Diesel. <laughs> welcome to, to, welcome to Florence. <laughs> Come to Diesel's Pizzeria. Yeah. He's, he's Italian as fuck. I think. Yeah. He's from New York, right? Went to college in Manhattan. That guy's New York. All right, that guy's Italian. Uh, they both lead legendary bad boy franchises. They, uh, the franchises that they work for, both put speed at a premium, right? Mm-hmm. And both have had co-stars Unfortunately, in some who cases. are not very safe drivers. So <laughs> there it is. Yep, there it is. <laughs> there we go. Old Vinny D. Oh no, that's perfect. This ah. is the, oh no, that's different Vinny uh, from Jersey Shore. <laughs> Fucking yeah, his God damn it, that's good. dad's name is Irving H. Vincent. That does sound. That's a step Dude, Mark Sinclair is such a cool old school uh, classic actor's name. Like, and he's just like, ah, fuck it, and I'm just gonna go with Vin Diesel. He also has a biological twin, which is crazy. Like, they uh, look exactly like, except his twin has full head of hair. Is he jacked yeah. up? I think he's pretty big. Yeah, that would it's suck just, to be Vin Diesel's identical twin to be like a skinny, just yeah. a, a nerd. Well, then you're no longer identical twins. You're just kind of brothers at that point. You no? can you can lift your way out of being an identical twin. Yes, like if exactly. you are really committed to being your own person, you can just take fitness very seriously and get way better. Yeah. I remember me, my, me and Nick were walking somewhere and we saw it was tw- identical twins. One of them was in pushing the other one in a wheelchair, and he's like, "Oh, well, they're formally identical now." And it's like, "Yeah, you're kind of right. It's just how it is. Unf- this is the way the brakes, I guess." Mm-hmm. Um, Ken Jack, your second pick. 
Uh, I'm going to go with Bill Belichick, one of the greatest coaches in NFL history, and Mark Wahlberg. Uh, there's an obvious comp here, both Boston guys, but also both of them thought they could stop the Jets in 2001. Uh, bona fide fact for, mm-hmm. for both of them. So I feel like that's just an obvious uh, comp outside of the Boston legend, Famous legendary NFL Boston quarterback, status. Bill Belichick. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> well, he just thought he could, they could stop the Jets. They just wanted to stop the Jets on, on mm-hmm. in September, or it, they did play in September and lost to the Jets in 2001. By the way, I looked it up. It's it's a fact. Uh, so both of them thought they could. Mark Wait, Walker. that was that was the uh, the Mo Lewis game. I think it was. Yeah, we knocked Drew, Drew Bledsoe out. Yeah. Yes. Well, I think if if memory serves right, that game was delayed for a week because of 9/11. And it was so, September 23rd ni- and 2001. Yeah. So if if 9/11 had never happened, there's a good chance that Tom Brady would not have had the same career that he has. Holy I shit! Thought, I think I, you're, not, you're right. not to not to pull a, f- a a rank fact. Didn't the week two game just get moved to the end of the season? Isn't that what happened? So by the looks of it, they went September 9th to 23rd, and then the last game is the 22nd of December. So I don't think it totally fits up because then it would have been I into January. I forgot if they pushed the season back fully. Or mm. if they just delayed it. Hmm. Yeah. I don't I know. They won the Super Bowl that year. The Browns were just, yeah, like, it, was, it was, it got moved to the end of the year. It got moved to the, the end of the year. This is the start of the dynasty, too. So the Patriots dynasty never happens, never even starts without 9 11. That's fucking crazy. What, a, what an insane they, thing. They, 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 they still would have played them that week. So that it would have yeah. been. But there's a lot of stuff that went different. True. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Practice, just, they had yeah. two weeks to game plan. Yeah. And George Bush had two months to game plan for the Jets. Exactly. <laughs> I just want to see the memo. Um, it shit would have went different if Mark Wahlberg was on those planes. That's mm-hmm. also a fact. I, I just saw um, the Sopranos episode with Eric Mangini in it yesterday. He's in like the he's in like the penultimate yeah. episode of the of yeah. the series. He, he's just he's like Artie Bucco's like, hey, uh, Manginius is over there, and he yeah. has no <laughs> lines whatsoever. Tony just gets up and talks to him, and then he you walks just, away. See that guy over there? That's the Manginius. The Manginius. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a tough nickname to have and not still be coaching. It's like you just – I mean, you got to be a fucking legend to hold the man, like any genius nickname. He just should him. be a coach. I feel like Mangini wasn't that bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough to see him just getting put in a body bag by Nick Wright on a yeah. fucking talk show. He does yeah. feel like a guy who – like he should have been a guy who was like a failure as a head coach, like one or two stops, and then became just an elite coordinator for the rest of his career. He does feel like one of those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, my next pick, I'm going to go Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I'm going to take a guy who won something a long time ago, remains a legend, maybe gets to like, you know, the mountaintop, but can never cross it. I think Aaron Rodgers comp is Al Pacino, one Oscar. Uh, that's it. Hasn't won in a long time. Uh, still considered elite. Like anything Pacino's in like, well, with the except I, with Aaron Rodgers, tearing, his wife, Aaron Rodgers tearing <laughs> his kid. ACL is, is the equivalent of Al Pacino being in Jack and Jill. That's the comp. Yeah, okay. Like that is. <laughs> Al Pacino tearing his ACL is when he had to do the Dunkachino dance and Jack and Joe for Adam Sandler. Yeah. I'm gonna go, I'm going, I'm going Aaron Rodgers, Al Pacino. Probably could have gone, probably could have said Shailene Woodley, since that was like who he that was the funniest thing when he dated Shailene Woodley, and people were like, wait a second, like he he's like he's not a vax guy, he's a natural medicine. Like, yeah, his his fiance bathes in mud and poop. Like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> not like the most not the most Switch. shocking thing in the world. <laughs> Did you ever see that uh the please don't destroy sketch where he's like on the couch playing Shailene Woodley two K twenty? It's like one of the features in the game is like you get to dress your boyfriend Aaron Rodgers up. <laughs> <laughs> so he's stupid. definitely he's definitely hooked up with Gwyneth Baltrow, right? She doesn't. Aaron remember. Rodgers? Yeah. yeah, she wouldn't care if she did. <laughs> I don't. I don't think he would. He be for the Goop brand. I don't yes, think he'd be he for. I think he would be very interested in the Goop. Yeah. You think he's? You think he'd be pro Goop? Yeah. They would have the the most vile sex that's ever happened in <laughs> mankind. Like that would be the most boring, disgusting sex that's ever happened. Be like pouring tea on each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I need Aaron Rodgers to retire solely so like that style of helmet is just no more. I hate mm, it. I'm with you. Big, I'm with you, Jeff. The the giant like Martian old. helmet that it he wears. Just, it's it's bigger it's every year. What are those the zenith? It's like know, it's when uh, it's like it's like when Peyton was still wearing that one helmet. Like what is like the shot? Well, it's it's the. Well, he needed that. Yeah, that man had a it's true. It's fucking dome. So it was a prescription helmet he was wearing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Have you ever <laughs> seen Mark Kelso's helmet back in the day, like late '80s, early Speed '90s? Flex, that's what it was for the Bills. Look up Mark Kelso's helmet that Holy he wore shit. because it was uh, it was like <laughs> twice the size of a normal helmet. It's huge, <laughs> dude. 
<laughs> he looks like a little kid wearing like an, an NFL player's helmet. Yeah. That is massive. He's the John Olerud of, of the NFL. <laughs> is, it's got an echo on there. <laughs> Dude, he has like the, the pad thing that they wear in practices over their helmet, like built into the helmet. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. crazy. Oh, the John Olerud helmet was always crazy to me because John Olerud wore that like the no ear flaps classic batting helmet. I, I don't think that would have protected anything. Like, no. take, I'm not a science guy, but that, that was such a floppy helmet. Like he, he was basically wearing a helmet that you serve ice cream in. The ice cream helmet, yeah. It's yeah. like there's no protection there. Um. All right, Gooch, you're back up again. I had him further down the list. I, I also had Rogers on here, but I'm just going to go ahead and piggyback off you. My comp, a little different. Another guy who probably should have won more, uh, hasn't. I'm going to go Tarantino for him. This comp also works because Tarantino notably fucking hates his family. Has <laughs> on record many times said, true. I will not I will not see any dime of mine go towards my mother. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. That was so, such a funny thing that like came out about Rogers too, because it happened because of The Bachelor. Like yes. people kind of knew that there was that, but it was never like a very publicly facing thing. And then when Jordan Rogers is on The Bachelor and won The Bachelor. It was such a storyline. They're like, yeah, we don't talk to my brother anymore. And they're like, oh, I wonder uh, hmm, who could he be talking about? And it became this huge public thing that everyone knew that they hated each other. Mm -hmm. Worst public appearance on a reality TV show from a famous person's family member, uh, Jordan Rogers or Tom Hanks niece. (laughs) Tom Hanks niece did it. She threw a (laughs) that was that was electric. PFT, did you see that? I didn't see that one. It's It's an all time clip. You have to see it. Tom Hanks' niece, what did she say? She's just screaming and yelling about down this stupid reality show. She's like, I should have gotten more air time. Yeah, it's, it's really <laughs> weird. Well, she probably grew up with Chet Hayes, so I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm Absolutely. Be a fly weird on the wall. show. It's yeah, called, it's called Claim to Fame. It, it airs like after The Bachelor, and it's like people who have a connection to famous people. Example, Tom Hanks' niece, and people within the show have to figure out who is who and what they do. Um, it, it's a show. People still watch it. It's on the air, but it's a show that would have 20 million people would have watched that show had that come out in the early 2000s. Oh, it would have been like the biggest thing in the world had that come out then. Uh, back to PFT. I just want to say I, I, it dawned on me right now. I definitely should have done Chet Hayes with Chad Kelly. Oh, yeah. It's big, the same person. <laughs> big miss. Very similar. If you, yeah, if you told me that they that they were the same person, I'd be like, I could take that. I could yeah, both, sex. both come from like prestigious, wholesome, yep. all American families, expected to do big things in acting. Uh and uh and actually shout out to Chad Kelly. Chad's kind of turned around recently. I think he just signed a multi year extension with Toronto in the, yeah. in the CFL. So. The Argonauts, which by the way, one of the coolest team names in all sports. Yeah, the he's, Argonauts. He's doing well. That's that's great to see. Uh for my next one, I'm gonna go with um now, you said Vinny Testaverde earlier, so I'm assuming we can do players that aren't currently in the NFL. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, RG3, <laughs> Jeremy Renner. Oh. All right. Both uh, showed very promising starts to their careers. Both suffered some bad leg injuries. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and RG3 actually started his career in the Hurt Locker, a.k.a. the training room for there we go. almost the entire first like three years of his life. So that it's was true. Yeah, that's going to be my comp. I like that. That's a great comp. Thank you. Off the top two. That's really smart. Fuck. I, Jeremy, poor Jeremy Renner. I feel like it's almost unfair to Renner. He's still around, though. He's still kicking. Like, like yeah, He's not kicking anymore. RG3 Bob needs the- an app. <laughs> that, that leg is fucked up. He's not kicking anymore. No, he's he's, he's going to be fine, right? RG3 is on TV now. I think he's hosting Monday Night Football, right? Yeah, yeah, but that's like that's like if Jeremy Renner went into a different field. I feel like we're we're hate, like like, like Renner, he Renner has, Jeremy Renner has gone into a different field. He has a yeah. fucking he's got a band and he had an app. It's true. Yeah. yeah, you're forgetting about the Renner app. His song yeah. is great. Oh, we're not. Ken Jack and I aren't forgetting. We're still in debt on that app. Yeah, <laughs> me too. We're yeah, we're paying <laughs> off loans. I have, Ken Jack and I have so much money that we'll never see from that app. We spent all so much up. money on stars. Yeah. Uh, all for my all for my account that was named after Dennis Franz from <laughs> NYPD Blue. Yeah, uh, you, uh, um, RG3 is kind of an app though. RG, he's, yeah, he's become. Uh, if you see his tweets, it looks like something that was like designed via some sort of algorithm where they just yes. take like a combination we, of of Jamel Hill and Darren Ravel's tweets and mix them up <laughs> and spit them out. Yeah. Also, both have debuted haircuts that got absolutely clowned on by the internet. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. When so we, had the, faux hawk, we, the faux We've hawk talked on here about 
the guy in college who I saw uh, when we were out for Halloween my senior year, he showed up at the bar with like a Robert Griffin the third costume, but it was like an alternate version. Mm. I think I've told but our mind is he came up in a he came out no, he came up in a Robert Griffin the third jersey and he had like fake like feathers and a beak and he was Robert Griffin the bird. That was his that was probably <laughs> his name, which I think is like it is really funny. Like, it's so stupid, but it is like it's kind of funny to be like just like a like a Washington fan. And you're like, well, like a Baylor, whatever it was. Like he because he yeah. has like probably previously. It's like oh, I guess like I'm just Bob Griffin the bird. I guess. <laughs> it's great. So if you remember, didn't his, did his car get stolen outside Brown's training camp one year? That w- I don't know if I remember that, but that wouldn't shock me at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Ken Jack. I'm going to go with uh, the Lions receiver, Amon Ross St. Brown. And my uh, actor comp for him is Jussie Smollett. Um, and my reasoning is uh, one of them is a lion that catches and the other got caught lion. So I think that <laughs> it just makes perfect sense that they two, those two get a little comp here. <laughs> this is a really classic Ken Jack bit draft. This is like <laughs> old school throwback. <laughs> what was the reason not to take any other lion who catches a pass? <laughs> He's the best one, right? Yeah. They both have a family that are in the business too, you know. Equinamius St. Brown. There's other small it's running around in Hollywood. It, it just works. You know, I, um, I, I'm starting to think that Jesse Smollett was telling the truth this whole time. I've, I've come, Jesse Smollett truthers. I've come back around on it where it's it's the biggest lie ever told, but he keeps doubling and tripling and quadrupling down on it. I've I have no choice to put to start to believe him right now. So maybe I'm the, the only one out there who believes Jesse Small. It's we call we call that the avatar effect. If something goes yeah. on so long, you begin to reverse your opinion on it yeah. because it just it forces you to. Um, Kyler Murray for me, obvious one. Danny DeVito, just mm-hmm. uh, versatile, tiny guys. Um, though Danny DeVito active right now, Kyler Murray kind of not active right now. That's, yeah. that's my best comp. Uh, rest in peace, Vern Troyer. I didn't feel like that comparison would be very. Uh, We'll be very fair on that. I feel. Yeah. I feel like uh, Danny DeVito could could honestly put in some work in the backfield, like uh, like a Mike Tolbert type. Like just give him yeah, ball, yeah, just, yeah. Line, yeah. just sneak through. How many? If if you gave Danny DeVito the ball at the at the half yard line, like as close the inch line, and you gave him twenty carries behind an NFL offensive line, how many touchdowns could Danny DeVito score? Danny I DeVito think, right now? I think he could score twenty, and here's why, Jeff. <laughs> here's why. <laughs> It, it there was an old idea. I think it went viral on Reddit like ten years ago. You get you get like Alec Ingold, a big ass fullback in the backfield blocking for him, right? Just got extended. You you hand the ball off to Dane DeVito. Alec Ingold turns around, grabs Dane DeVito, and throws him over the goal line. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You get in every yeah, time. It just has to break the plane, I guess. Yeah, you it, throw his ass like super high up. Vern Troyer would be the best goal line running back of all time. <laughs> fucking like Roquan Smith leaps up and yeah. meets, meets him at the, the no, line. Okay, all right. So if maybe Troy Palomaro him, he'd die. Imagine, he'd like, imagine, imagine if the Bush push was just Reggie Bush picking up Matt Leiter and hurling him over yeah. the end zone. <laughs> I mean, imagine imagine Aaron Donald. So you'd have to – here it would be Danny DeVito as the fullback, Aaron Donald as the tailback. You hand off to Danny. Aaron Donald's behind him and just catapults him over the top. Throws is that, is that a price. forward pass? No, you're throwing, you're throwing the guy. You're throwing the guy, not the pal- – wait. Okay. Can they do this with this, this Cowboys receiver that's like five foot two, Deuce whatever? Deuce Vaughn. Uh, running back. Deuce Vaughn from Kansas yeah, State. Yeah, just have one of the – have a bigger <laughs> fullback or something. Have like uh, – Dalton Schultz is on a team anymore. Have like Zach Martin pick him up and just shoot him like a basketball over their offensive line. <laughs> let's get let's get Gene Steratore, an NFL ref. In the week. No, let's get Dino Blandino in here. Yeah, D- yeah D- D- Dino Blandino. Can, is it a forward pass if you pick up the running back and hurl him and, over the line of scrimmage? I don't Dude, think Vern it is. Troyer, he's so perfect. For, like He's so small and compact. He just holds the ball, and you, you pop him he right probably, over the line. He'd probably die. Like yeah, just hitting the ground. Did. So there's my question, though. You said 20 times. How many? So here's the second question. How many? <laughs> how many? How many hurls over the line of scrimmage could Danny DeVito survive? Uh, I, <laughs> I think gonna he, get, he's going to get helicoptered in the air at some point. He's going to get whacked, and then it becomes like 500. So <laughs> whoever catches him, it's like they're intercepting Danny DeVito <laughs> and the ball. <laughs> I'm just imagining at some uh, point he takes a hit and like bursts into a ball of feathers like Randy yeah. Johnson hitting that bird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh it's fun God. to think about, though. It's very oh fun to think God. about. Uh, okay, moving on. Gooch. All right, I'm back up. Yeah. Um, 
I'm going to go Mike Tomlin, not a person going to reference him to just every Rocky movie, <laughs> every single one of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the first one won an Oscar. That's his Super Bowl. Since then, he's been pretty good. You know, most of them are pretty good, but they motivate the hell out of you. And that's and they get you pumped up. It's the Black Air Force of movies. That is Mike Tomlin. He's yeah, the man. Rocky franchise. Has there ever been like a really shitty Rocky? What was the bad one? Rocky Five. Yeah, uh, Rocky, Rocky Five was rough. Was pretty bad. People felt that way about Rocky Balboa for a while, but I think Rocky Balboa is mildly underrated, right? Like, yeah, that, like, I kind of like it now. Yeah. Balboa is his 2022 season. Mm. Yeah, that's that's fair. It's fair. <laughs> Oh, Still got Mike, to 500. Mike Tomlin, Rocky franchise. PFT, your, your fourth pick. Hmm. For my fourth, I'm going to go with Mike Vick. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> and Lena Dunham. Ah, uh, yep, yeah, yep, yep. Yeah. And for obvious both, reasons. Both known for their treatment of dogs. Yes. I could have gone. Mistreatment. I could have gone Michael Vick, a.k.a. Ron Mexico and Michael Rappaport. <laughs> yeah. Does Michael Vick have any siblings? Does uh, he? <laughs> he's got a younger one. Michael Does Vick. Michael Vick who, also Marcus, also, who, who didn't turn out so well. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Does Michael? How does Michael Vick feel about Odo, Odo Beckham Jr. Is another question. I don't know. We we'll have to look it Did up. Lena Donna have a OBJ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Beef. Beef. She had huge beef. With OBJ. Oh, it was like a, it was a legitimate beef from Lena Dunham's perspective. That she, was ex entirely one sided. She got mad because Odell Beckham didn't try to fuck her one time. Yes. Yeah, I like an uh, award show. Yeah, but very just completely disrespectful by Odell Beckham. Yeah, totally, totally out of line. He wasn't like, "Hey, aren't you the girl from Girls?" Like. <laughs> It, no, it just didn't happen for him. Aren't you that bag of milk KFC always talks about? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I know you from the bar stool. The bag of milk lady. <laughs> Michael Vick also called the bag of milk quite frequently. Um, yeah. Ken Jack, your fourth pick. Uh, I'm going to go with Max Crosby, and my Hollywood comp to him is Pete Davidson. Uh, two guys known for their work on the weekends, obviously. Both former addicts, obviously. Uh, and people mostly know them for their exes. Okay. That's, I got a lot of X's. That's, folks. that's that's my favorite one yet. That is that's that's so you got to know football to understand what the <laughs> fuck that is. Like that is <laughs> you got to know that they have a lot of X's. Everyone knows that about them. That that's I like it. That's 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 my favorite one yet from the you. Best is for last. I hope you guys um, like. Your I can only ones. imagine. Uh, I'm going Kirk Cousins now. I feel like we got to throw Kirk Cousins out there because I thought about Kirk Cousins for a while. I like think it's very – because what what is it? It's mediocre, right? Like it's mediocre, turns in something great every once in a while. But like in the end, so many big things known for are just bland or like, you know, two pick, two touchdowns, one pick that's pivotal that loses the game. I'm going – I think it's Gerard Butler. Like I think Gerard Butler has some really big shining like roles in movies that are badass and awesome. And he can put up some numbers, but in the end, like he's in some just fucking turds. And like he just he, like when when the bright lights are on, like I don't think Butler's really showing up. You don't right? like the ugly like, truth. When it matters. Mm. The ugly truth. Like, like, the like Gerard hunter. Butler's filmography is kind of the Kirk Cousins of movie. Like, yeah, he's got three hundred. Yeah, Kirk Cousins had a great season last year, and the Vikings had a good record. But it's like then he's also got some really bad fucking movies that are just horrible. Like he's in. Like he's in the has fallen franchise, which is like, yeah, like De De Den of Thieves was a solid Kirk Cousins season. But was it great? Because then he also had Geostorm, right? You had Greenland. Do you like, think uh, do you think Kirk owns any firearms? Because then he could be the ooh. machine gun preacher. <laughs> no, That's but he true. has that stapler, right? He had like a really nice stapler. Wasn't that a social media? Like wasn't that a Twitter video once for Kirk Cousins? Stapler. I, I feel like Kirk doesn't own guns. I feel like he, he knows a lot nice. of people. That own guns, but he's just like, oh, that's hey, that's a little violent, isn't it? He's like, I don't have a problem with no. Hunting, it's Carson but... Wentz is the hunting guy. That yeah. picture of him, like eighty dead geese, is very so funny to this day. Yeah, Dude. there's a, I, I I found my Kirk Cousins tweet. It's him. It says studying film at my desk with my hashtag Redskins half that uh, at Swingline Stapler. Great gift for all Redskin Nation fans. <laughs> Get yours now, and it's it's like a it's a link to a website to buy a stapler. Jeff, can you yeah. can you uh, text that to me? I'm going to retweet it. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> I don't know why. I, I don't know why I remember that. It has only 91 retweets. Nobody why, talked about it. Why? It's probably, I, the, 
the quote tweet's probably PFT. I, I guarantee you if I quote tweet <laughs> you're the you're probably the reason I know this exists. Oh, it's because it was like yeah, it was bar stupid. It was like KFC and <laughs> Swingline guy, like the fucking dude from uh, Office Space. The yeah, Stephen yeah. Root character. Just love staplers. You take my staplers. I think ah. the 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 actor I would actually compare Kirk Cousins to is um I think I go Glenn Close. Glenn Close always going to put in a good performance, always going to try hard, never a threat when it comes to like a big game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like she's what, 0 for 8 in the Oscars? But, but, I think, Close? but I think the fact she's been nominated so much makes... Yeah, but Kirk Cousins Post- gets into the playoffs so much and is never a threat, never even considered to be a threat. Yeah, maybe. But I feel like we're, we're kind of knocking, we're knocking our girl Glenn down a little too much. No, I think if anything, it's promoting Kirk. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, because again, Kirk will, he'll be there. He'll be in the dance, but you're never going to be like, oh no, the Vikings are coming up. Like, that's never going to be a, like when they played the Giants, that was the safest bet I ever made in my entire life. I was like, there's no chance the Vikings win this game because it's Kirk Cousins. And that's Mm -hmm. Glenn Close. Mm -hmm. She gets nominated for an Oscar and I'm like, I'm never going to bet on her. I know that she's off the board basically. And I can bet on one of the other four. (sighs) Yeah, I can see it. I just, I'm sorry, Glenn. That might, that might be right, though. That might be the better one. Remember when, when, she, remember when she was a lock to win the fucking Best Actress, <laughs> finally? And then I just, I don't know where she lost. Glenn, Glenn, Olivia Coleman. Glennie yeah, Close. Like, she's like, well, fuck well, me, I guess. This is it. Glennie Close running an OnlyFans. Yeah, Only remember Stands that, podcast. Olivia Coleman like, did not think she was going to win. She was drunk as hell. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> also, this, this is niche Marvel thing, but we we rode the Guardians of the Galaxy ride at Disney World. Oh, they opened up the new one. Very awesome. Glenn Close is actively involved as a character in the story, but they for some reason threw in Terry Crews, who has yeah, was nothing wild. to do with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and he comes in and he just they're like talk about taking you out of it because you're kind of like, damn, I'm in Guardians, like you know, I'm yeah. on Xandar. It's like, oh, that's that's Terry Crews. Uh, okay, <laughs> it just really right. it really removes you from the immersion of 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 the the ride. Uh, At least Glenn Close is in the movie, right? Uh, Gooch, you're up next. All right, I'm gonna go with. Cliff Kling, wow, Cliff Kingsbury. I almost called him a Klingon. Jesus, Cliff King- <laughs> Kingsbury, uh, Megan Fox. Uh, two people who have, for the most part, just coasted by on being good-looking people. Fact. Just, just that is what their careers kind of got built on: being good-looking people in a successful franchise. Uh, for Cliff, it was being near Kyla Murray, and for Megan Fox, it was just being in Transformers, right place, right time. Mm-hmm. Um, and from there, they really haven't done anything. So I got a question: um, Is Cliff Kingsbury that attractive? He's pr- I think so. I, he's tall. He's I tall. Don't, I don't, it's I don't the think he is. Too. He, he, he did the voice. He does he my s- my thing where he just wears sunglasses all the time. And I he think wears when sunglasses. he has, I, th- I think when he has the beard, he's really he's got a, a dash. He's look kicking him. He's kicking when he's got the beard. He has a great voice. He's a hot ass voice, which I didn't know until Hard Knocks. He has a he, hot house. His house yes, is his house 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 is sexy, fun. dude. Such a good example of like when he got hired, people were like, what? <laughs> Why? He was like 500 in college. Yeah, it's like yeah. He, he was beyond mediocre in college with Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Like he his best record ever was eight and five twice. <laughs> One, he went to two bowl games. One bowl game he went to with a six and seven record. Yeah, but and he, he went played to the NFL for- and were like, what? <laughs> But he played for Bill Belichick, so he I, must be I will good. give him credit. He stuck he stuck around a lot longer than I thought he was going to. Yeah, I well, thought that was going to be. Like, yeah, he'll get another college glow up, job dude. for sure. He'll look, get, how, look how gross he was here when he was actually playing. He big time glow up. He'll he'll get a he'll get a <laughs> mediocre Chad. college job and, and win a lot of games and get a big time college job after that and then stink again. That's just how that that that's going to be the ending never ending cycle. It's like the edited Chad pictures. Yeah, of, I mean, he looks like Ryan Gosberry. Uh, PFT last pick. All right, so um, I'm, my Danny DeVito, Kyler Murray comp got taken. We can put, we can we use oh. the Chad Kelly, Chet Hayes as my last yeah, one? Yeah, no, I like really? that. I could, I just, I could also see uh, Patrick Mahomes, Gilbert Gottfried, just like doing voice work. Voice guys, <laughs> yeah, same voice no, guys. I like, I, Chad same Kelly, voice. Chet Hayes works on so many levels. Yeah, yeah, I like that one. So let's stick with that. Very serious. Pat Mahomes needs a very bad 9-11 joke. Yes. Uh, one week after 9-11. Yes. <laughs> uh, all, every single one of those little shits from Outer Banks is Justin Herbert. Hey, you know, just kind of like it's the same. I'm out, I'm out on the Chargers, Ken Jack. I, I, I will never forgive them for what they did in the playoffs last year, ever. Yeah, fucking join the club, dude. 
It's it's, it's, it's every year. year. <laughs> I was gonna say last year. Well, last yeah. year was was the what most they did in the playoffs. You'd be talking about. You could be talking about any playoff game they've ever played. Like literally, <laughs> them fucking against the Jets, losing off like three missed field goals. Yeah, it, it's literally bad. any year. I I've seen more. Unless you've been to a playoff game, I don't know about. I've seen more Chargers wins in the playoffs than you have. Oh, the Bengals Chargers yeah, I was, games. Yeah, I was at the Bengals Chargers Donald, wild card game. Donald yeah. Butler strips Giovanni Bernard. Yeah, right on the last drive. Red was, rifle. Red rifle. Five turnovers in the first half. Yep. <laughs> Never forget get that <laughs> um chad kelly chad hayes ken jack your last pick I, I can't even imagine uh my last pick is uh gonna be christian mccaffrey and my pro comp for him in, in the hollywood is peter dinklage uh both white both half backs quite literally uh in this <laughs> case uh one is a 49er and the other is a four foot fiver so it just kind of the matchups just align perfectly for dinklage and mccaffrey a four foot fiver. Okay. <laughs> Instead of a 49er. <laughs> Stupid. That's pretty good. I, I met the, the, they all, they're known, known for their X's is, is your, that, that's your Mona Lisa for this draft. The San Francisco four foot fivers. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one. How many How many touchdowns? This is now turned into how many touchdowns can you score if you hurl these people over the line? <laughs> over yeah. yeah. <laughs> Peter Dinklage would be way tougher to throw. He's a sturdy. He's, he's a dense little guy. Yeah, but I also could see like I, I could see Dinklage having some sort of like aerodynamic tactic midair that gets him into the end zone every single time. Who's a, <laughs> who's homie from Willow that we almost – I almost accidentally killed at Star Wars Celebration? Work uh, – Warwick uh, Davis? Warwick Davis. Warwick Davis Warwick is Davis really fucking small. Yeah, yeah, he'd be great for that. He would be good. Warwick Davis' height is Warwick Davis is three foot six. Dude, he barely covers the football. It's perfect. Like you just <laughs> throw him straight over. Uh yeah, Dinklage, like you said, I don't know why I looked up Dinklage's height. You just made the joke, four foot five or I could have called um, him a four foot nine or I didn't want to lie. <laughs> uh, I could have easily gotten DeVito, away with that joke. DeVito's four ten. That's not easy. I don't I don't know if you could much taller or that no, not even that much taller than uh yeah damn that's crazy um do you think Peter dinklage gets a little self-conscious about that he's like i'm the short guy and you're the short guy too but you're a little taller than me this really yeah. fucks with me like do you think when they meet each other it like <laughs> kind of bothers them? Had, i wonder if they've met that's gotta be an all-time picture if they have it's like when like a five foot six guy meets a five foot eight guy it's like we're both mm -hmm. short but god i really wish i was five yeah. foot eight mm-hmm <laughs> What if, um, if if you shrunk Ant Man down to the size of an ant and just had him like lay belly down on a football and then threw the football into the end zone? Is that a touchdown? Should I be. Think so. As long yeah. as he's wearing the proper number. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? I, um, I tried to look up a picture of them together, and I'm just getting really bizarre AI pictures. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Photoshop together. It's very weird. Don't look up Peter Dinklage, Danny DeVito AI. That is bizarre. Oh my gosh! Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Tua. I figured take a guy Tua. He has some good moments. It's tough because he's younger in his career, but he has some good moments. But everyone in the world is split on Tua. You either kind of like Tua or you don't like Tua. Tua's got his army. He's got his follower. I, I think Tua is the Nick Cage of NFL quarterbacks. You kind of either like Nick Cage or you don't like Nick Cage. Very much two brackets on that one there's really no in between on nick cage no one's like a a lukewarm nick cage guy and at this point no one's lukewarm on tua you either think Tua's is good or you think he stinks like no one's in between on tua me and ken jack have talked about this but dolphins fans have become the most insufferable they in suck dude as because we we have to deal with it because we have burrow and herbert and same draft class these tua fans still think they're like oh no no it's not even close still tua they still think, they think two is leagues above both Herbert and Burrow, like which is you're an insane person. You have to be an absolute insane person to think that it's fucking crazy. But I will say at least uh, Nick Cage knows how to hit, how to take a lot of roles. Tua does not, which is why he gets concussed so much. It's true. It's, it, it's, <laughs> yeah, good point. It's it's like um, with Dolphins fans, they know that two is not awesome. Right, they defend him so fervently. You, they wouldn't be like this if he was just incredible, and they knew that he was awesome. Yeah, like have you ever like a guy like in, he's like showing his his wife off and just going over the top, talking about how beautiful is, and you know, like deep down inside, he's like compensating for something. <laughs> yeah, like it gets weird. It gets weird yeah. sometimes, right? Like you could be dating the hottest woman in the world, and still you be could, weird. You could be like, look how gorgeous she is. Isn't my girlfriend so beautiful? She's beautiful and perfect and kind and sweet. It's they're laying it on pretty thick. 
That's very true. But I mean, Nick Cage might be pretty concussed too. The more I'm thinking about it, Nick Cage absolutely has had a concussion. He's taking some hits in his career. Yeah, never on set. Taken. It's like just like behind the Hollywood scenes, like parties. I'm sure he's taking some hits. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Gooch, last pick. Uh, I'm gonna go with Ezra Miller and oh, Antonio God. Brown. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's yeah, good. that's that's that might be the number one comp on here. That's like the because. most like the. Because their their career trajectory has almost been at the same exact time too. Yeah, exactly. And then the they're just derailed by like these crimes that are not like murdering someone, but they're just like a rack of like just weird fucking like instances that have just derailed their careers. And so yeah, that's where I'm going. I, and Ezra Miller keeps getting second chances. Antonio Brown has gotten a million of them. They're kind of doing the same speed. thing where they have they have. Um, so many different controversies that you <laughs> lose because if each one of them have probably like five different controversies that are enough to sink an entire career forever. But if you stack five of them on top of each other, it's tough to figure out which one to be most mad at. So you fly a little bit more under the radar than you should. Antonio Brown was a raider and Ezra Miller literally like raided people's houses. <laughs> yes, he he burglarized yeah. them. <laughs> it's all coming together. Antonio Brown also like, didn't he like raid people? <laughs> it's like, it's like kind of the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, the Antonio Brown also. I don't know if, it, if there's any fit for for Miller here, but do you remember when Antonio Brown farted in that dude's face? We didn't make yeah. a big enough deal about that. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was very that was insane. Ezra Miller absolutely has an instance, farted. a like a farting instance. Obviously, has like some aggressive instances. He had I, a church, the ch- the church yeah. of Ezra Miller that he was trying I to get about Susan that. Sarandon to show up to. Yeah. <laughs> now, keep in mind, I I love fart humor. It's very funny to me, but I'm also not like. A millionaire NFL player. I took Antonio Brown so much less serious after he farted in that guy's face. Like there's something about, like there's some like that. That goes for any receiver. If fucking Jamar Chase did that tomorrow, I'd be like, man, I don't any human. I don't think I view him quite as elite. Like any elite athlete or someone who is like in that space, a billionaire could. Well, billionaire. I mean, if PFT, of- if I saw a video of PFT farting in like his podiatrist's face, I, I would be. I yeah, would take like, you slightly less seriously. Like you're really like. It really bumped him down. I was like, man, I don't, I don't know about this guy now. And there's many other things that came out after that. But you're like, oh, yeah. interesting. Farting on someone is funny. It's just in the face. That's yeah. where it's a, there's a line to be drawn. Yeah. Like, yeah. like if if you were like a like a very intense LeBron versus MJ guy, and one or the other, like your pick, you saw him <laughs> fart in someone's face. I think you'd be like, man, I. I kind of think I'm on the other side now. Like I kind of Jordan, think I Jordan, go to the other listen, side. Jordan 100 percent farted in Tony Kukoc's face. <laughs> I, I have no, not a doubt in my well, mind. That's different. That's different. Yeah, yeah. Like like Jordan like farting in someone's face on the select team of the dream team during a yeah. practice. Like no, I, I can. I'm okay with that. It's a mamba mamba mentality. I farted on Clyde Drexler. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. That's uh. I think that's it. PFT. You had Deshaun Watson, Bill Cosby, Jimmy Garoppolo, Vin Diesel. I did have Jimmy G too. I had him with uh, Johnny Sins. Mm. Uh, you know, like that. <laughs> yeah, that worked somehow. Uh, Robert Griffin the third, Jeremy Renner, Michael Vick, Lena Dunham, and Chad Kelly, Chet Hayes. Ken Jack had Kenny Pickett. All 2023 uh, actors on strike. Uh, Bill Belichick and Mark Wahlberg. Uh, really, without context, these are tough, um, <laughs> which uh, both tried to stop the Jets in 2001. I'll give you some context. I'm on Ross St. Brown and Jussie Smollett. A li- <laughs> uh, you, you, you said uh, a, a lion. Uh, one of them is a lion that catches and the other got yeah, caught lion. Caught lion. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> uh, Max Crosby and Pete Davidson uh, got over addiction issues and know for their exes. Um <laughs> Uh, Christian, Mc- Christian McCaffrey and Peter Dinklage. One is a halfback in the 49ers. One is a halfback <laughs> four foot fiver. Yeah, that, that, that actually, that may be the best one. That hits differently. Um, I, have oh, the only one I did put, by the way, just a note. The only one, I, the serious one I, I didn't add was Orlando Bloom to Jalen Hurts. Just guys that were surrounded by significantly better cast members that made them look better by default. <laughs> and once they had to try and lead something on their own, who knows what's going to happen? I, I, tr- I tried Hurts. Couldn't think yes, of very hot. I tried Josh Allen too. I couldn't think of anything either. Um, I had a uh, Brady Gosling because I feel like most of most American men hated them for the first ten to fifteen years of their career and have yeah. kind of pivoted later in their careers. And now they're like, oh yeah, no, I actually like this guy now. Yeah, the Notebook was his uh, 
uh, yeah, his like first, gate, yeah, basically. Oh, uh, if it, I if I were president, I would make sure that anybody who posts the meme about Ryan Gosling being a liability and remember the Titans, I would <laughs> I would get that they'd be locked up for a year. Thank Anyone you. who posts that meme deserves to go to prison. Um, uh, Russell Wilson, Dane Cook for me, Aaron Rodgers, Al Pacino, Kyler Murray, Danny DeVito, Kirk Cousins, Gerard Butler, and Tua, Nicholas Cage, Gooch has Joe Burrow, Timothy Chalamet, Aaron Rodgers, Quentin Tarantino. Mike Tom- Tomlin, all of the Rocky movies, Cliff Kingsbury, <laughs> Megan Fox, and Antonio Brown, Ezra Miller. Uh, thank you, PFT. Thank you, guys. That I appreciate fun. you having me on. Uh, yeah. Football. Uh, football. This episode brought to you by football. <laughs> right it. around the corner. And it's it's on right now. Football is on. Mm-hmm. It's going on. It's happening. It's never off, baby. Uh, good luck to everyone's squads this year, except for Gucci's same division. I wish you zero luck. Mm-hmm. We don't need wish it. You, Me too. Wish you nothing but the worst. Uh, one, again, okay. one Super Bowl and a loss has created so much. The Bengals fans are cockier over losing one Super Bowl than Steelers and Ravens fans ever were over winning Super Bowls. I, I stand by that. And I hate those two teams more than I hate the Bengals. I've never seen anything like it. It's the Burrow effect, baby. By the way, betting fact for you, PFT, the Bengals have, are traveling the least miles this year. That's out a of the fact. entire NFL. There, there's something that, to that is a That is a nice perk for like the middle of the country teams is that like yes. they do – Meanwhile, it's like Oregon and I, I can't wait it's for Seattle's Oregon. Seattle's fucked. I can't wait for Oregon and Washington sports to travel all their teams to Rutgers for Big Ten yeah. for, for like for Big Ten field hockey in a few years. Like that is just brutal. That is so tough. Cross um, country. I saw someone say that's so like, well, what if what if Washington, Oregon, USC, and UCLA? What if they brought all the Olympic sports at the same time? So that's a good idea. Go, well, what if they brought them all in like for a month? That's just where they did school. I go. That seems like that kind of defeats the school purpose yeah. a little mm-hmm. bit. <laughs> like they're just like and you're just hey, doing, and you're just doing sports. Hey Huskies, you're all gonna live in in Piscataway for a month <laughs> uh, every year. Um, that's it. Uh, make sure to like subscribe here on YouTube uh, for PFT Ken Jack Gooch. I'm Jeff D'Lo. We'll talk to you next. Time.